yes uh, before we are moving to the main topic uh, let's get an uh, get an simple idea about what is mobile application development and uh, ways of developing mobile applications so what is uh, actually a mobile app development actually it is an act or a process which mobile app develop for a mobile devices with the exploding of the popularity of the smart devices mobile app development is become a popular medium of software creation uh, as you all know uh, like in desktop applications mobile app development also using wide range of programming languages and frameworks so uh, what are the different types of creating mobile applications there are three main uh, types of creating mobile application one is native uh, mobile application development web mobile application development and hybrid mobile application development so let's go each and every one by one by one so yes when it comes to native applications these applications mainly focused on the operating systems like ios and android these uh, native applications has that ability to access hardware component very easily and flexible way because it directly communicating with the hardware component apis uh, which provided which provided by the operating systems so mainly google and ios are in main part of this industry that google owns the android and apple or owns the ios as well so when we are going to implement these native applications we are mainly we have to use some uh, different uh, programming languages if you are going to use uh, if you are going to create android mobile applications you have to follow java or kotlin for develop the application if you are going to use uh, to create an application for ios you have to use swift or objective c so if you are talking about the pros and the cons of this native application development the main pros are in native application it is very efficient with the device resources that means you can easily access hardware apis like camera gps and etc it's of a most reliable and fastest responsive experience to the user that means uh, if you are using android device you are familiar with the android ui so you can very uh, you can get an user you can get a more flexible use experience once we are creating a native applications if you're talking about the cons we have to maintain two different source codes that means if you are creating an application you have to maintain one source code for android and one for ios so uh, we are duplicating our effort so once we have uh, and also you have to have experienced developers to handle the platform specific languages that means if you are using android you need to know java or kotlin if you are using ios you need to know uh, swift or objective c so when it comes to the industry these uh, the businesses focus mostly on the cost because that they are uh, providing solutions and they are waiting for get some business value so they have uh, decided so the mainly developers focused on another way of managing a simple uh, source code the one source code for both platforms then they are in, in implemented application by using web apps so what is exactly a web application web application is uh, based on the browser that means if you want to create a web application it simply runs inside the browser but the main thing is you cannot run it in the offline the mainly uses uh, if you are creating the web application you are directly using javascript css and html so because of these limitations that means you cannot use these applications offline and also you are focusing on the browser and the browsers are different in uh, providing uh, values to the users in different ways because of that they are focusing hot on hybrid mobile application development so what is actually a hybrid mobile application development it is a combination of native applications and web applications these applications actually a web application but looks 
and feel like native applications. That means we are writing this application by using uh, JavaScript, CSS, and some kind of uh, languages which users in the web browsers. And we are encapsulate this uh, technology inside a native component, native application. So it looks like, looks and feel like native application. And also, by using these hybrid applications, you can access hardware components like uh, the native application does. That means you can access hardware component like uh, camera and GPS and uh, other stuff as well. So, if you are talking about the pros and the cons of the hybrid application, building a hybrid application is much quicker and more economical than native application. That means if you are managing to build a single source code and you can deploy your application into both store by managing a single source code. That means if you have a bug, so you just need to change that uh, thing inside a single source code, not in both platforms. As I mentioned, uh, it has uh, access to device internal APIs and device hardware. And also, as I like I mentioned, if there is a bug, you have to maintain a less code because you are using a single code base. So uh, if you are talking about cons, it is much slower than the native applications. And also it depends on the third party platforms. As an example, if you, are, if you want to use a camera, what you have to do is you have to import a module and you need to access that camera of the native side. And yes. These are the basic idea about uh, the native applications, web applications, and the hybrid mobile applications, and the pros and the cons. And uh, these are some uh, famous hybrid framework that use in industry. Samarin, and it's owned by uh, Microsoft, and it's written in C Sharp and Ionic. It is an open source SDK, and also the Flutter. Uh, it is uh, now famous in the industry as well, and it's owned by the Google. So now let's come to our topic, React Native. So what is actually React Native? It is an open source mobile application framework which created by the Facebook. It is actually a, a JavaScript framework and it's a, this a application, React Native applications are written by JavaScript, TypeScript, and it is encapsulated into native ones. That means if you want to create a React Native application, you need to write your code by using JavaScript and you have to encapsulate it uh, for both iOS and Android. It's actually based on the React, uh, which uh, provides by the Facebook for building a user interfaces. But in the React Native, it not focuses on the browser, but it focuses on the mobile platforms. Once you write this application, you can use this application in both iOS and uh, Android as well. These applications are written a mixture of the JavaScript and XML SQ markup language. As you know, that is JSX. Then what happens is writing a JavaScript and we are uh, encapsulating and rendering it inside the native APIs. That means for iOS, for Objective-C and Android, uh, for Java, Java for Android. So uh, the currently React Native supports for both Android and iOS platforms. Yes, now, yes. Now we have the basic idea about what is React Native and it is built by the Facebook and it's written by the JavaScript and using TypeScript and you can access the native components by importing modules. It is also a hybrid mobile application development framework and it is an open source. So uh, why do we need to use this React Native? It gives optimal performance like native applications. That means even though we are writing this as a JavaScript, writing these applications by using JavaScript, we can encapsulate it into the native ones. 
so it gives the optimal performance for the user and also the code can be reusable that we don't need to write two different source code to manage our both platforms that means for android for an ios we just need to manage only one single source code and this react native has the large community even though we have faced some a problem we just need to go and check whether if there is an issue uh, also they are by another user or we can get the support from the community and also you can uh, you can also uh, use this uh, large community to develop your uh, you can contribute for the framework as well that is where it's cost effective that means we are managing a single source code and we don't need expertise developers for manage uh, two different source code for iOS and Android you just need to manage a single source code and it supports third party libraries as well like I mentioned if you want to access camera you can simply just uh, use uh, modules for your uh, project when we are talking about react native and we are learning and we are going to uh, create our first applications we need to know about the basic components that is the what is uh, react native components so mainly uh, the react native components are the main building blocks if i explain it further think that you are using a login page and you have text boxes and check boxes and buttons there so we can take text boxes as a single component we can take a button as a single component so you single components so uh, we can use those components as nano components that means you can uh, create the button component and you can use that components in anywhere of your application you just need to import those component you just need to inject those components for your features so basically these uh, components can be written as functional components and class components now mainly uh, developers using functional components by using hooks and also the class components and class components also used uh, and it uses the component life cycle so now we have the basic idea about what is component component is basically a isolated uh, value so uh, once we have done with the component we need to when we are talking about the component we are talking about states and properties what is actually state is if you are as example if i get an example for login there is a, a page with a text boxes and button if you want to uh, fill those text boxes and uh, by clicking the button you need to call an api get and details what you are doing is you are simply writing the uh, input input your uh, values and press button you just need to store those values if you want to store a simple values inside your component what you are doing it doing is you have to use these states this state are you you can use this state inside the components if you are kill the application and comes back these uh, values are not there because it's not uh, store inside the application only inside the component if you want to use this state you need to mention it in the uh, constructor so uh, in the demo uh, omar will explain that as well so uh, properties the most component can be customized when they are created with different parameters if i as i mentioned states are uh, store inside the component once you are using properties and store it it inside your application you can use that properties whatever the component you have so uh, if you are talking about now we have the basic idea about, about properties and states so uh, properties are immu immutable and state properties passed down from the parent that means if you are in the login page and you are going to uh, doing an api and you are retrieving values and you need to store those values what you are doing is you are using redux uh, 
store. So I will be explaining in the next slide. So what you are doing is you are storing those property values inside the Redux store, and you can use those property values within your component. So like I mentioned in the previous, if you want to store values inside your application, you need to manage us. You need to have a state manager. So for that, we are using Redux and also in the industry now it has Mobex as well. So uh, what is actually Redux? Redux is an open source uh, JavaScript library for managing application states. If I explain it further, this uh, Redux has a main components, actions, reducers, and store. What is actually your action? I'll go with this login example. I will input my values and click login button and it will be calling to an action. This action call for the API and return values. Once I get these values, what I'm doing is dispatching it into Redux store reducers. So what actions doing is managing those behaviors. That means we are calling for the APIs, returning values and uh, do some process and we are uh, passing our values to the Redux store, dispatching our values. The Redux reducers are specified how application state changes. These state states change according to the actions sent to the store by the action uh, values. Like I mentioned, actions only uh, describe how the behaviors happen, but don't describe how the application state changes. This application state changes managed by these reducers. It has types and we are, but it has types. Once we are storing our values inside those types and we can use these values within our component. This will be explained by uh, in our sessions as well. So once we are going to the demo, you will get a better idea about what I am mentioning. This is only for the theoretical part. Yes, Redux store. Uh, this, uh, this store uh, manage the state tree. That means once we have store our values inside our reducers and store, and we can use these values whenever we want in any component. We just need to map those values and inject. So this is some kind of like a database. We are keeping the object. This is actually keeping our values as a plain object. So uh, if I go further, if I explain this, uh, like in my previous uh, example, if you are using a login page and I input my values, once I input the value, it's called the action and it will be calling for an API and returning some values and do some behavior things and it will be calling and dispatching for the reducers and by using these reducers, those values are stored in the Redux store. If you want to use these values, what we have to do is we need to communicate with the reducers and get those values. So this is the basic theoretical idea about React Native and what is React Native and why we, use, why we need to use this kind of uh, technology and why we have moved to hybrid mobile applications and we have some basic knowledge idea about web applications and the native applications. So uh, Omar, you can carry on your uh, demo from here. Okay. Uh, thank you, Deepka. Uh, to uh, making uh, a solid uh, base for uh, the rest of the uh, session. All right, so uh, as Dinka said, uh, some of the parts may not, uh, may be like uh, gray areas to you and uh, some of the uh, terminologies that we used in these slides are a bit new to you, but don't worry. Uh, these are sort of the good theoretical uh, points where, where we we need when we build an application. So in the very beginning, we don't we we might not need those in order to uh, get, create sort of a single screen. But uh, in the later, you will find them very important. OK, so uh, we have another 35 minutes. Let's uh, let's let's go and uh, uh, do some uh, practical uh, 
uh, development uh, which will be uh, help you to understand theoretical parts as well uh, let me share my screen with you guys okay uh, hope uh, all can uh, see my screen yes okay good perfect okay guys so uh, usually this presentation uh, even the practical part will last for uh, two hours uh, when we are doing this session to uh, uh, non-technical uh, students but uh, here uh, we have made it a time box to uh, uh, appro approximately for uh, 45 minutes uh, so we dropped few of the uh, coding parts and uh, we made uh, a repository with separated branch branches uh, for uh, uh, for uh, significant milestones like uh, creating a, a item and then uh, uh, creating a list view and so on so i will share the repository with you so if you find any points missing in the, uh, in the session you can go and refer the repository and i will i will drop a, a documentation how to set up your uh, machine so if you are interested you can uh, go through it and uh, do it quickly okay so uh, uh, now uh, we are going to build this uh, application throughout our uh, session and uh, in in the first session so that's today we'll build this screen and uh, by clicking on this uh, button we'll be uh, navigating to uh, watch the film or the trailer and uh, we will be able to scroll uh, uh, scroll for more list items so uh, for uh, more movies and uh, yeah that that's the plan um so before starting uh, um uh, let's uh, let's imagine now we got a requirement and we we have a ui wireframe or sort of a ui design like this so uh, even before uh, creating a application we should understand how we are going to build it uh, so uh, first of all we should we should configure our environment so uh, let's let's say for different technologies we should uh, create our environment uh, according to that uh, if for dotnet we should we should have a, a .NET framework so so for react native we we have to have this node.js java uh, react native cli android studio xcode so if you guys are working on windows you can't go with xcode because it's for mac uh, but you can go with the android studio and build the application uh, with the help of uh, Android and if you are going to release it for Play Store then you should you you must have uh, uh, a Mac in order to run it and debug and uh, make sort of platform specific uh, codes and uh, uh, now where where are we going to start the React Native project that's not a big deal because uh, React Native provides a good starting point to build the application uh, with a single code line so we can copy it from their official documentation and paste it in a, a, com, a cmd and press enter then a brand new react native project template will be downloaded into your machine and then you can start uh, changing uh, the components in it to your final uh, dream um so uh, uh, additionally you should install uh, NPM modules, which we'll be looking to uh, in our practical session. And uh, determining which components we are used to uh, implement, uh, which will be uh, discussed in the next slide. And uh, then we have to uh, start implementing that with a plan. OK, so these are the component breakdown. Uh, now, uh, these uh, names are given for non-technical students, but uh, I hope you all are, I mean, very familiar with these terms. And uh, by looking at this UI, you you can have a basic and high-level breakdown uh, which components we are going to use in order to build this UI. Like uh, we have to use image, so uh, it's more like HTML or developing a web application. So um, it's not very new to it shouldn't be very new to you guys so uh, uh, by putting an image in in html html uh, uh, page 
just we have to put an image tag uh, in React Native. That's it. So just uh, putting like a div tag, we, we are using the view tag here. So uh, uh, same XML like uh, tags I've been using here. So that's not uh, new to uh, we all. So here, first of all, we should uh, put a outer container and then we can define another view and put a text inside it. And uh, by putting another view to cover the body part uh, and uh, by defining a ratio here, let's say one is to uh, nine if if the whole width is 10 or the whole width is 100 we define the this uh, this area should be 10 and this area should be 90 we'll do the job so inside this body container we can we can define a list view and give a sample of a single item which will populate from a data array um hope uh, that that made sort of a sense to you guys so uh, that's that's the plan we are using uh, in order to build the application. Okay, so let's go to uh, let's go to uh, the practical uh, session. Uh, first of all, now uh, as we discuss in the slide, we should get a React Native project. So for that, let's go to Google and uh, search for uh, uh, initializing and, uh, React Native. Okay, so for any of your uh, question, uh, we have the answers in uh, the official documentation. If not, we can refer Stack Overflow. So this is the official documentation, React Native .dev. So even from the setup your local environment up to the uh, very uh, very complex situations, they they provide good sort of uh, documentation and answers. So here. We have two ways of starting a React Native application, but uh, you can always go with React Native CLI uh, that 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 provides good customization, and uh, uh, I recommend that uh, uh, for going with uh, React Native CLI. But Expo is also a good candidate uh, where new people can uh, um, use uh, in a very uh, quick way. Uh, but uh, when it comes to customizations, that's bit hassle. Okay, let's go with tracking to say like and you can choose your development environment uh, and uh, um, uh, search for the right command. Here we have creating a new application. We can use this command. And uh, now uh, like other um, uh, technologies, we have a few versions here. Uh, if you are going to use specific version, you can go with this this command by specifying a version. But uh, to keep it simple, I'm using uh, this command. Let's copy it and go to a terminal. Uh, if you are in Windows, you can open command prompt and uh, paste it there. Uh, now uh, I'm in a directory called interns demo, so the project will be uh, cloned inside that. So by looking at this command, we can understand that uh, npx react native init awesome project. Yeah, awesome project is the project name. Uh, let's change this to uh, uh, rn demo. Okay, by entering the command, a big project will be downloaded into your directory. Uh, this will consume some time, maybe five minutes to ten minutes, depend depends on your uh, network connection. So uh, for the time being, I have downloaded a project and uh, I'm going to stop this and uh, start from the place where I, uh, where, where from the uh, downloaded project. So uh, let's navigate, where is it? Okay guys, so in interns demo is the place where I stored my project. So going inside, I have uh, this project. A sort of a brand new project and uh, I'm uh, uh, this is the uh, things that included in the uh, brand new template okay I'm going to uh, drag it and put it into a VS 
code where I'm going to edit the code. OK, so. Uh, uh, as you can see, there are a few directories and files. So uh, let's uh, let's let's uh, uh, dig a bit deeper to understand what is inside these uh, uh, directories and what are these files. Mm -hmm. So the first is a uh, uh, test where we use to put test cases, but uh, in in here we are not using it uh, because this is a sort of high level. Uh, session so in here uh, importantly all the android related stuff will be inside this uh, this directory so all the native code or the uh, uh, java or kotlin code will be here so uh, we can even run this this folder as a separate android project uh, similarly all the objective c or shift uh, part will be inside this ios folder which which we we don't actually need to implement anything inside these folders but when we when we when we add a uh, npa module to extend our capabilities inside our app some of the entries will be going here and in extreme conditions like uh, we are going to customize our application uh, in a very big way we have to implement some uh, native code inside this folder but we don't need to think about those things at this level and uh, node modules, very common uh, 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 thing uh, in uh, most of the JavaScript pro projects. So e as like in other uh, JS projects, uh, we can use NPM modules to extend our capability. So let's say um, we need to uh, we need to uh, use push notification inside our application. So we don't need to uh, integrate. I mean. Uh, implement uh, things in our app by own but we can use firebase push notification sdk or one signal or any uh, third party uh, provider to uh, uh, our project by using npm modules so we can go and use npm install the uh, package name and that will be uh, downloaded into a um, not modules and then uh, relevant um, entries will be automatically added into Android or iOS, which which then we can easily use their um, their code inside our application in order to do the job. OK, so uh, then again, uh, now this app.js is very important and uh, we'll be working on this file uh, throughout to today's session and uh, I keep it keep it opening i will uh, move through others uh, this index.js is the place where we where we actually come to the uh, application in the uh, in the very uh, uh, very first uh, second so when executing this file we say now go and render this uh, app where is this file we we open few seconds ago so that's how uh, the app is getting initialized and showing this initial page. And uh, package.json, uh, where all the definitions are there for uh, node modules, dev dependencies, and other uh, scripts and uh, configs. OK, so uh, this is the uh, file that we are going to uh, edit throughout this session. And in very big projects we can't put all the content in one file so in that case uh, we should have a sort of a good directory structure to uh, maintain our code and uh, make it modularized so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, uh, put a folder called uh, source or app and then put this app.js into that and then uh, we can uh, create all the other subfolder directories like the Nuka explain for actions uh, <clears throat> where all the user triggers <clears throat> use actions are getting triggered and then API services where where we call uh, backends and then uh, store reducers we can have a separate directory or directory structure and then store so so that will that will be a, a sort of a, a good uh, uh, way to scale the app application and uh, make it more maintainable 
so uh, since to keep it the project simple, we'll uh, first look into this uh, file. Okay. So uh, now you got the uh, project and now you need to run it in a mobile device. So how we are going to run it? So if we are going to use uh, uh, MacBook, so you can uh, go with uh, this command, react. React native run iOS. If you are on a Windows and you have all the Android related stuff are set up, basically Android Studio and you have an emulator, you can turn on the emulator and use the same command with run Android. Okay, now enter this will uh, make the app run on your emulator. So uh, since I'm using Xcode, I will be using a, a run iOS or optionally you can go to the project uh, directory and double click on this uh, rndmo um, uh, workspace. Yeah, this file. So ultimately, you will get this application running your simulator or uh, emulator. Okay, so we have this uh, step one edit app.js to change uh, and uh, some of the contents. Let's map this content in our code. Okay, now you can see some of them are here. Step one, edit uh, app.js, so on. So uh, let's remove uh, uh, some of the unnecessary parts. So I have a, another branch which, uh, which removed all things. Uh, the repository I will uh, share with you. Okay, so this is sort of a speed way of uh, doing it and I will explain what's uh, what's happening. Okay. So you can see once I remove all the other codes and keep only few of them, uh, some of the parts are removed from the existing UI. So here we have this uh, text learn more. Let's go with the uh, adding uh, string new and uh, um at another text input and um uh, let's go with the new text okay so things we added in the component reflected in the ui so uh, so that means if we are if we if we try to implement uh, implement this UI that will be reflected in the uh, emulator. Okay. So uh, I need to change the color of this um, uh, read the docs uh, to discover what uh, to do next. So as you can see, we have linked a sort of style here. And uh, and I think you have noticed this, this style we have defined the component is very similar to uh, HTML. So as I said you earlier, you can assume you can assume for the for easy understanding uh, like we are using view in HTML and we are using view here to make layout arrangements and other stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's go to the definition of this uh, style. Okay, it's here and uh, as in CSS you can define colors here. Let's, uh, let's put red. All right, so that's it. So that's very easy. OK, so uh, I think now we have good understanding what's happening here. So uh, it's very simple. Now this part is for style sheet, so we can exclude it. And now this part is for rendering the UI. So whatever we do here will be reflected in uh, in the mobile device. And here, okay, now we have some of the import commands. Now from where these view view tags are getting from? It's from React Native. Now they have sort of different uh, definition inside React Native SDK, and we are using it. And we we pass 
these properties inside this view, which will be, which will be, uh, I mean, get customized according to the properties that we are sending into these, uh, these set of tags. Basically, we call this as a component. Now, this is view component. This is scroller view component. By passing a property, we can change the behavior of that component, uh, which we can, uh, which even you can understand when when you are doing uh, stuff in uh, development. I don't want to uh, flood you with all the theor theories, but understand the basic, uh, the way of behavior in the React Native, and then uh, start from yourself, and then research then you can understand easily rather than uh, getting all the points at once. Okay. So guys, uh, back to presentation. Now, uh, this is our plan. First of all, in order to, um, in order to implement this set of UI, first, we should go with defining the outermost view and then put two other containers uh, to uh, create the arrangement or the layout. So for this, how we are going to define this um, ratio? Oh, uh, in a uh, few years back, we used table for HTML and then uh, then div uh, concept came and we used div uh, by giving like uh, 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 if the width is 100, use 50% um, for this div and 50%. Uh, percent for this view so the concept is bit um, bit similar let's uh, let's look into uh, the right way of doing it so we have a concept called flex boxes so for that you even can uh, google it um, flex boxes in RA. okay same documentation I explained earlier will give you um, A to Z uh, support. Okay, so uh, if you are good with Bootstrap, uh, uh, the way that we divide the things like small, medium, and uh, large, uh, so the concept is very same. So this will not be very hard you guys to understand. So uh, as you can see, we can use flex. Uh, boxes to divide our uh, space. So uh, this is one, this is two, uh, this is three, and uh, all together, the height is we uh, we call it uh, six. Or if we give like two, um, four, and six, that will uh, sum up all the uh, ratio and uh, automatically adjust the height and uh, make the arrangement easy uh, for our sake and uh, flex direction so this is to uh, uh, to show uh, like uh, arrangement should be in, in uh, horizontally or vertically we can use column or row um, like this so this is row uh, and uh, this is column and we can use uh, uh, row reverse to make it into reverse side similarly for uh, column reverse. So uh, few uh, few of the example, uh, we can justify content, uh, make it even or make it centered or make it uh, flex in, flex start. So that this is very easy. You can do whatever you need with uh, with these flex boxes. Okay. So this is the concept we are going to use in order to arrange that uh, UI, which which we saw in our presentation. Let's go to the code. I'm going to get the update from the next branch. Now, uh, for your information, we have uh, named the branches according to uh, uh, the steps, first step, second step, and uh, we have 2.5 step. Okay. I'm going to collapse a few of the components to uh, make it uh, easy understanding. Okay, we have this return. Uh, where we put all the elements we should return into UI. 
as you can see now after removing the uh, tags given by react native we have added two views uh, bounded by a one view which which we under uh, which we discussed in previously which will hold these two views let's go to the styles now uh, this outermost container is to is to uh, hold uh, these two uh, views for movies and the uh, rest of the containers so we have given ratios for these two views so let's uh, check and verify it in the code this is the container going to styles uh, flex is 10 and arrangement is uh, column so child item should be uh, arranging one by one to downside and background is white and we have two child elements first one is a uh, header and body for movie list okay now we have defined flex is 10 and first for the movie title we have given flex 1 and rest of the 9 is given to body container now we have two uh, uh, items in the big container and by going inside header container uh, we have put a text which we which we altered in previously in the given uh, template uh, anything we put inside text will be reflected in the ui with a sort of a, a label and we have given few uh, um, styles as well color is black font size is 20 so this should be visible in the ui and uh, inside inside the body container this is bit bit more uh, complex than the text we looked uh, previously we have oh, okay before understanding this uh, let's look into the ui so uh, we have the code and the code is reflecting this ui so as i explained you earlier we have a big container here with the uh, height is 10 and one of its proportion is uh, given to movies and rest of is given to the body and in the body we have defined a single list item and inside it we have a, we have a image and sort of uh, information container which which is in a, in a row arrangement and we have again uh, the name few information and a button in column arrangement so let's check it out so uh, this is the single list item container is for this container and we are having image and information box okay we have the thumbnail inside it we have image and from where this image is getting from okay image is getting from a uri okay where this uri is residing okay i have defined an objective uh, i mean object sorry uh, which we which, which provide all the information into this view so uh, if you if you click on this view uh, you are getting the uh, image so this image will be automatically uh, fetched sorry uh, automatically fetched to the uh, uh, image tag uh, that we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't uh, bother about that will be done by uh, react native okay we have this image tag and we are providing the source for the image it's very similar to uh, html and inside the uh, information box we have the title and the year and a button so uh, uh, this uh, touchable opacity is a sort of a tag uh, we have to uh, define a very sort of a customized button or else we can use button tag in uh, react native uh, but uh, that is not uh, very customizable that's okay that's fine okay now uh, i hope uh, you understood how these elements came from the code and uh, now these elements are in uh, uh, column uh, arrangement so uh, let's check 
we have given it right correctly. OK, see. Uh, flex direction is column. And uh, flex 60 given for this, then uh, other 40 is given for uh, the thumbnail. Now we need to click on this button and uh, watch the uh, field, but uh, still it's not happening. So we have to write on press method. So this is touchable opacity. Let's go and uh, check what are the parameters we can send it to that from official documentation. OK. Here, a uh, live demo is given. And once you press it, count is getting increased. So how it is getting clickable? You can see on press method is given. And uh, this on press is called here. So uh, let's copy it, paste it here, and uh, this on press is defined here. So I'm going to copy the definition from there and paste instead of this. So uh, I need to uh, open the browser. So uh, uh, here I have this uh, YouTube URL. Let's copy. Uh, Okay, now I want to open this one in uh, in the uh, uh, browser in in our application. So let's search how to open the browser. So uh, as you can see. Um, so since I know the code, uh, if not, uh, you can bit refer the code given, not sub given from Stack Overflow, and copy the relevant part you you uh, you need to use and uh, bring back it to our code and use it. Okay, linking open URL. Uh, so we have to provide the URL. So from where are we getting the URL? So uh, let's see um, how we are getting the name of the movie into this place sort of uh, item dot data title where is this item dot data ah it's defined here so item dot youtube url will do the job um okay dot okay youtube url uh, make sure you have imported it from react native Uh, so uh, we can verify it by looking at the import command. Okay, linking is done. Okay, save it. Let's check. Okay, it's working. Perfect. So uh, it's very easy. Um, nothing to uh, nothing to uh, and, uh, have. Uh, waste your time and uh, search or re-implement yourself but uh, just adding a tag and uh, a line will do your all the uh, job in the application we have a few minutes let's uh, look into how we populate this uh, this set of uh, items in a scroll view um let's and go search uh, uh, list in react native we are using the flat list uh, so uh, you can go to the official documentation flat list is there with a given example so this is how the list is working so this this is the code that we need actually and here you can see we have to provide a data source to get these first item, second item, third item names. So data object is defined here. So first item, second item, third item will be getting from this list. If, if we have five items, there will be five items in the list. And we have to given a style for this. So this uh, uh, purple or the rose color, we should given. So for that, 
we use this parameter render item render item and we have to define it in uh, in our code okay this is it so uh, inside this item we are showing the item dot title okay um let's get that code and uh, let me explain it uh, within uh, two minutes Okay, collapsing for easy understanding. And now, uh, instead of uh, in, in inside the body container, instead of uh, having the single list item, I have defined this flat list where it is exactly exactly a uh, same uh, this command. Uh, but I see uh, missing brand items. Okay, fine. Okay, it's there. Fine. Save it. Now we, we have the application like this and uh, you can click on it and go to browser. Uh, let's see how it uh, actually came. Now, as I explained, from where these data are from. Previously, we had only data for uh, a one view, one item, but now, uh, we have given a data object where we have defined it like given in the uh, example uh, uh, a sort of object array uh, we have all the information for movies so if uh, if we another item here let's go and add similar item put the id there additional item should be appended with the same information as in the uh, uh, one before last item so that's how it works and how uh, these uh, how, how this is in the order of uh, um, order in a list view so that's a job done by flat list where again react native is providing that interface to us so this is the flash uh, flat list from react native so the rendering job will be done by them but we should provide them what what uh, what style should be rendered so for that we have to define another function which uh, which the code which the code exactly we we used uh, uh, for single list item so uh, you can see the image and uh, thumbnail container and the rest of the things are there. Other information, and uh, that's that's how we provide information to the list view. Okay, so uh, we got uh, three minutes. Uh, we're supposed to uh, finish the session by twelve o'clock. Uh, uh, so uh, this is how uh, we are building an application uh, with uh, simple steps. Uh, this uh, if, if if we code it, uh, this will take around uh, around uh, three um, two to three hours for uh, experienced developer. But it's okay if you if you play even uh, for days in order to uh, get some experience. So uh, uh, the first point I will share the repository so you can get a clone and uh, switch between branches and how uh, see how the development went uh, in order. And then I will put a documentation to uh, set up your environment. If you are interested in React Native, you can uh, continue with that. So uh, next step will be uh, will be for having two pages and navigate between uh, those two pages. With uh, um, let's say we have a button here, and we we are going to see more information of this movie in another page. So uh, we we are planning to cover in the next session and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be try to uh, uh, save the information from uh, from backend api to the application which will cover sort of uh, persisting data in the mobile applications uh, that will cover i mean uh, most of the mobile development in react native and rest of the things are contextual uh, special and uh, 
you can uh, you can learn uh, with uh, new requirements might be in your projects or uh, pet projects uh, uh, like that. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, uh, we can actually uh, conclude by having a hope to the next session. Thank you.